Well, it has been a volatile week, so let's see how those traders have fared. Peter Maguire from XM is joining us now live to do just that. Pete, great to have you on the trade as always. What a week, huh? What have traders been doing? I think they've been banking a lot of money, Cara. I'm pretty sure they're sitting on banana chairs and they've had one of the greatest weeks probably that uh, your mind puts back certainly for the last six months and if not even longer. It's just been extraordinary and when you're looking at all of the different movements, yeah, what a week it was. So how do you get in that mindset then? You see the volatility start to creep through. You know, if you're an intraday trader and you do want to capture those big moves, where are you looking? How do you set yourself up? I think you've got to look at first off, as you know, the fundamentals tell the story. So what did we have on? We had the Fed meeting. We had some PMI numbers. We had global themes, central bankers talking. So it's been an ongoing process over the last couple of weeks, getting yourself ready. Then we've had equity markets sold off. We've had US dollar index smash through 97. And uh, you've got to look at your technical charts. You're thinking, where are your lows? So it's all about understanding the fundamentals. They're d deep in your heart. Then you move into your technicals then you appreciate, right, what the moving parts are and how, it, how the storyline comes together, Cara. And when the market is moving this quickly, how important are stops and limits? If you're kind of going to walk away from your trading screens, you've got to have a break sometime. How important are they? I think they're very important. They're crucial because that, uh, that is the, that's the go-to mechanism that allows you to walk away from your screen, allows you to take a little bit of time away from those... Um, some people say it's mundane and other traders absolutely love it. They just sit in front of screens and on, as we've discussed over many months, you know, sitting in front of on push bikes, watching the screen, stationary push bikes, getting themselves really immersed in what's going on across six or seven different screens in your time zone. So, yeah, you set up your stops, understand what the um, what's going on, but also it allows you to, you know, you've got to you can travel to a restaurant or a bar or a cafe with an iPad, you've got your phone. So it's not as though you're a long way away. As long as you've got connection, you're on. So Pete, what have you been looking at particularly this week? Where where is where where have traders become excited? I think they've become excited across the currency side, certainly with the US dollar index and what's going on with the with the Fed. So the talks as far as J Power really set the week up beautifully. That US dollar index it was only, you know, a matter of a week or so ago, and it was at that 95 handle. There was, you know, 94.8. Now, where's it going? And then all of a sudden, boom to the upside, and the greenback has just gone absolutely, you know, gung-ho. Um, the You've got to look at your yields. You've got to look at what's going on as far as short-term rates. So all of that, and then the composition as far as as dollar went up, gold came down, so there was an easy one kept an eye on crude oil and the Ukraine-Russia situation and what's going on there. And then, naturally, shorting all of the equity markets has just been a boom trade. Yeah, let's talk about those equity markets specifically. Have we bottomed out or is there further downside to come in your mind? Well, I saw what happened as far as the Aussie. Today, we're up the best part of, well, I looked a little while back and we're up at nearly 1.7%. So it's been a very strong move and there might be even further upside in the next two hours. The overall across Asia is a little bit mixed, but uh, Japan's well up, China's off, off. But I think the overall momentum, that big push down is probably going to have a whack up tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see Europe uh, and, and the UK trade higher and then naturally get, um, some of those losses that have been incurred as far as the NASDAQ, it was down 1.4%. You might see a bounce to the upside tonight. So, uh, you know, the market's not over yet. We've got till... It's 13.52, we've got till about seven o'clock tomorrow morning till US shut, so there's plenty of time to make a dollar between now and then with 17 hours of trade left, Cara. Hey Pete, I know I always ask you, but I've got to ask about the Australian dollar because we have seen some mm. further weakness, this risk on environment, but has it gone as, as far as you think it might have gone? Well, 70.43, they might get into the 69 handle, we might see a 69.2, I wouldn't be, a 69.8 I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see the US dollar index strengthen a little bit. If you're looking at that Fibonacci around about a 123.6 um, uh, extension from that November to January low, so there's the potential to hit probably a 97.48. That's what everyone's got their eye on. We're currently sitting at 97.20, so there's a bit of movement left in it yet. Yeah, if that continues to spike in the short term over the next session or two, 
then naturally that Aussie will come off further. So there's the there's the storyline there. Also, the China market dipping, then there's an opportunity there. You could see further push down as far as Aussie. And Pete, I know you've always got your eye on oil hitting that $90 a mm. barrel mark this week. $100, is it in sight? Well, I listen and I talk to, you know, a lot of the traders that, are, that go to the OPEC meetings and a lot of the big movers, you know, they're all saying that 100 has got the potential. And you listen to many of the, the analysts from, you know, the big banks and the big oil traders and people in the Gulf. Um, I talked to, you know, big oil traders out of Mideast and they're all saying, you know, 95 to 100 has is, is got the potential to be there by March. So, yeah, it's been onward and upward. It's certainly not good from an inflation standpoint and what is happening to the the, uh, the wallet and the purse as far as spending power, Cara. It's really hitting everyone very, very hard. But I think there's further upside yet. And it took 90 out and, you know, there's every chance you could see a 92 by um, sometime next week. And Pete, are you going to be trading that crypto over the weekend? 36.691 for Bitcoin. I don't know, maybe. I'll have a look. It doesn't seem to stop. It's been a bit choppy. It hasn't done a lot in the last few days, if you're really looking at what that big washout was last Friday. So, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, just hold on to your hat. I think there's other money to be made at the moment in the short run. But it's been one great week and uh, I'll keep certainly an eye on it over the next you know, couple of days as far as trading and lead us up into February. Here's, here we are, the end of January, and it's been an almighty month to trade, if not one of the best ever since Christmas. Yeah, there we go. We all love that volatility. Pete, always love having you on the trade. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care, Cara. Have a great weekend. You too.